Hello, everyone. In this session, let's talk about nested structure. Before entering into the nested structure, let's continue with the previous lecture. What did we discuss in the previous lecture? It is arrays of structures, right? There we have seen how to access, how to read the variables of ar array of structure and then how to print the values. So there we didn't uh, practice with the pointer. So let's switch for a moment and practice with the pointer and then come back and continue with this lecture. So here you can see the changes that I have made. So here I declared a pointer which is of type struct student and I made the pointer initialized to S assigning the base address of this array to this pointer and then I'm reading the details using the array itself. Okay. But I'm trying to print the details using the pointer. So here you can see here I'm printing the name of the student. So since we are dealing with pointer, this time we need not use the dot operator, but we will go with an arrow operator, right? This you are familiar. Okay, so PTR arrow name. Similarly, I'm printing PTR arrow year, PTR arrow roll number. And then I'm incrementing the pointer. That means I'm making it to point to the next record and then continue with the loop. Again, the details of the next student will be printed. So as we have seen, when you are incrementing PTR, it is not just incremented by one, but it is incremented by the size of student, right? So this we have discussed in the earlier lecture. If you have not watched that, I'll provide the iCard of that lecture in the session. Please do watch and then continue with this. Let's compile this now. Yes, so let us enter the details of student one. Let's enter the details of second student. Let's give some name. I'll give my name. Let's give some year and let's provide some roll number. So here you can see the details of student one got displayed and details of student two also got displayed. So this is how you can use a pointer and we also have learned that whenever I increment PTR by one, it is not just incremented by one, but it is incremented by the size of the structure student, right? Now let us get into the nested structures. So let's see what is meant by a nested structure. You already know what is meant by nesting. What is nested if? You will be writing one if inside another if. So here this is a nested structure. That means you will be writing one structure inside and the structure. So there are two types of nested structures. In the first style, we will be writing one structure variable which can be declared inside another structure. Okay. So here you will be declaring the variable of one structure which we call as embedded nested structure, sorry, not the variable. One structure entirely can be declared inside another structure. This we are calling as embedded nested structure. In the second style, you can declare one structure, but the variable of that structure you will be declaring in another structure, okay? So that we call as separate nested structure. So let's see both the styles. First, let's talk about separate nested structure. So here first I'm creating an employee structure. The details are employee ID, name, and salary. So these are the members of the employee structure. Let's close it with a semicolon. Now let me create or let me define one more structure, which is organization structure. The members of this structure are organization name, organization number, and then I'm declaring the variable of the employee structure inside this organization structure. So this is what we call as separate nested structure. Okay. So then how do I access the members of employee structure? Okay. So usually as so far, we know that to access the members of a structure, we need a structure variable. But here, the employee structure variable is declared inside organization structure. So I can access 
this variable only through this organization variable. Okay, so first let us create a structure variable for this organization structure. Let's declare so that even you can declare it here. Uh, since I closed it with a semicolon, I'm doing it separately. Okay, so let's use the keyword struct followed by the name of the structure, which is organization, followed by name of the variable, which is coarch. I have declared a variable for this struct organization. Name of the variable is org. So through this only, I can access the employee structure. So how do I access? First, let us give the outer structure variable name, which is org dot the inner structure variable, which is emp dot the member name. Okay, org dot emp dot employee ID. So why am I using like this because EMP is declared inside the organization structure. So now this EMP is also like a member of this organization structure. So how do I access the member of this organization using the dot operator org dot EMP. After accessing this, now I want to access the members of this EMP. Okay, so its member is employee ID. So I'm initializing it with some value. But to access the members of the organization, I need not, I can use org dot the member name. Okay. So org dot organization name so that I'm initializing it to some value. Okay. So this is about the separate nested structure. Then let's talk about embedded nested structure. So in the embedded nested structure, what we will do instead of writing two different structures, okay, we will write one structure inside another structure. So here, let us take the same example. Let's start with the organization structure okay the members of it are organization name organization number so now instead of have declaring the variable of this emp what i have to do i have to write this entire structure inside this organization structure struct employee employee id em employee name and salary so this i am writing inside this and here you can see immediately i'm declaring the variable for this structure also because outside of this organization structure, I have no way to access this. So immediately you have to declare the variable for this before closing this structure. Otherwise you will get a logical error. And here I'm closing the organization structure. So now how do I access the members? Okay, so first let us see how to access. Uh, let us imagine that for this structure organization also I have created a variable org struct organization org so then how to access the members let us see to access the employee id so again this employee structure is declared inside this organization structure okay again the variable of this employee is declared inside this organization structure so i have to use the variable of this organization structure which is org dot the name of the employee structure variable name which is EMP followed by the member name, which is org.emp.employeeid. So if you see, there is no difference between the separate nested structure and embedded nested structure. So the way we access the members is same, but the way we are writing the nested structure only is different. Okay, so now let's quickly move on to the hands-on. Be ready with your devices again. Hope you are enjoying with the coding. Before proceeding with the hands-on, let me ask you a question. How do I know when to use a nested structure? For what sort of applications do I need a nested structure? For example, if you want to store the date of birth of a student, is there any direct format for date of birth? No, right? So we will write a separate structure for the date of birth in which includes the day and month and year of the student and then i will add that as a member of the student structure so where i can read all other details of the student along with that i can read the date of birth also can you give me one more example suppose i want to have the timestamp okay 
So what will be the format of his timestamp? It will give you the full date. Okay, say suppose today's date, it is 29 Feb 24, followed by hours, minutes and seconds. So the format is like that. So in that case, what do what should I do? I should create two different structures. One is for a day and another one is for time. Okay, so two different structures. Then I combine them into one more structure and then declare a single variable. Okay, so in such sort of applications where you doesn't have a, a predefined format or whenever a, a variable needs a group of variables, a collection of variables formatted. In that case, you should go with a nested structure. So now let's see how to read the details of a student, including the date of birth. As I told you, there is no separate format for date of birth, right? So now I create a separate structure. Name of the structure is DOB, which contains day. In a date of birth, what do we have? We'll have month and we have year also, right? In year. First, I'm using the separate nested structure. So as per the separate nested structure, what do we do? I want to keep the student uh, structure precise. I'll just have the roll number and year. Since I have used year there, I'll use the variable class here, which indicates which class does he belongs to. Okay, so now let's declare the variable of the date of birth structure here. So the details that I want to store, store for every student is I want to store the roll number of the student followed by the class of the student followed by his date of birth. These details I want to store in every student record. So now let's declare a structure variable for date of birth here. Struct name of the structure which is DOB and the name of the variable is DB. So now for this to I'm done with the student structure also. Okay, so what is this style? This is separate nested structure. So where I will be writing one separate structure and the variable of that I will be creating inside another structure. So here the student structure is my outer structure. Inside this I have declared the variable of DOB, which is another structure, DOB structure variable I am declaring inside this. So now let's see how to read these values and how to print. Okay, so now let's declare the structure variable using the keyword struct. Okay, so every time if you doesn't want to use the keyword struct, you can go with type def also. Okay, let me use type def here. So since I'm using the type def, now I'm declaring a user defined data type. The name of this data type is student. So directly I can use the name of the data type, which is student. Here I need not use the struct keyword again. Okay, name of the data type, which is student. So for this, let me declare a variable S1. Just one student details I want to read. So now printf. Enter student details. So this printf statement is just for our understanding. Okay. So what are the details that I want? I want roll number. Then followed by this, you should enter the class and you should enter DOB. Let's specify the format also. The format should be DD hyphen MM hyphen. Here. So this is my requirement. So this I'm specifying through a printf statement. Yeah. So let's read the details. First percentile D for roll number, then one more percentile D for class, and then one more percentile D for date, and then one more percentile D for month, and then one more percentile D for year. So totally five attributes we are reading. So what is the first attribute? Roll number. 
So roll number is part of which structure? It is part of student structure, right? So let's use, and it is not a pointer. So we have to use the dot operator, right? So name of the structure variable, which is S1 dot roll number and ampersand S1 dot class. So these are the outer structure members I'm accessing like this. So now DOB. So inside DOB, I need to read day, month and year. So these are the members of inner structure. So how do I access them? Through variable S1 only I have to access, right? So S1 dot, the first variable is DB. So this DB is a variable of the student structure. So now again inside DB, what do we have? We have day, month and year. So DB dot day. And similarly, let's give S1 dot DB dot month. Again, let's give S1 dot db dot year and let's see so here we will be reading all the details and then let's print these details also i'll just copy these two statements and i'll modify to save the time let me know in the comment section if you are getting confused if i am copy pasting like this so that I will be typing from the next session onwards. The student details are. So when, since I have to print instead of scanf, I want to use printf. And then in printf, we doesn't need ampersand. Okay. Why? Uh, in one way, if I copy paste like this and make modifications, you will know the difference between printf and scanf also. What changes probably you need to make, you will be having a clear idea of it in that way also it will help you so then let's add our term zero and let's close this okay now let's compile useless storage class specifier in empty declaration So just now we have seen an error, right? Why, why, why did we get that? So here, the name of this structure, student, I have given here here itself in the line, but as part of the syntax, I have to give type def struct and the name I need to close before closing this structure, right? So this is the correction. Errors also, you should know how to debug the program also, you should be able to know. So only I'm showing you each and every possibility. So here, now student is my user defined data type name. So I'm using student followed by S1. I read the details and I'm printing. Let's compile it again. We are done. So now let's give the details. So first I should give the roll number of the student. Roll number 12. And let's give the class one. And let's give the date. 2902. 2024. So you can see the details. Student number 12. Again, problem with the formatting. One is the year 2902-2024. So we are getting only two. Let me give formatting. So here my focus is not on formatting. I just want to give you the concept. Roll number 14, year one, and then date of birth. Let me enter today's date. Some lucky fellow born today. Okay. So here you can see the roll number of the student followed by year followed by today's date. Okay. So this is how you can make use of a nested structure. And that too, here we have seen the example of a separate nested structure. Now let us see the other case also, which is embedded nested structure, right? So in that, what we'll be doing, 
instead of creating the variable of this structure directly, I will write the structure inside this. Inside student structure, I will be writing the date of birth structure and I need to declare the variable of this date of birth here itself. Let us see what error do we get if I'm not declaring, see? It has no member called DB, okay? And there is no way of writing it outside also. Let's try to declare it using the keyword struct. Name of the structure is DOB. So for that, if I want to create DB, though I declared in global scope, since I have declared it inside the student structure, I cannot directly create a variable of this DOB structure. So then how do I come out of this error? Let me comment this. So here, before closing this structure itself, you have to create the variable for this. Error gone. Okay. So again, let's enter the details. Roll number of the student 23. Let's give year three. And let's give some random date, 24, 4, 2000. Okay, who is this lucky fellow? Comment me. Okay, so this is how you can make use of a nested structure. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. If you have any queries, please let me know in the comment section. See you in the next lecture. If you like the content, do like, share and subscribe.